It's Bear Mountain here. Meet. Tony. <laughs> We're here again to uh, talk about some flowers we're getting started mostly today we're doing anemones we're getting those started but first what we wanted to quickly talk about was um you may have heard that we have retired well that doesn't mean that we've retired from everything and it's I've had questions about are you still growing flowers oh yeah i will grow flowers until you can't I can't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, we're just not um, growing for commercial sales. We're just not selling to anybody. We're just growing for ourselves, for the farm, and for some friends. And so the interesting thing about that is the learning curve for now going backwards to grow a little bit less than all the thousands of flowers that we've grown for the past almost 20 years and to think rethink it back so that we're doing smaller amounts less successions and for the first time I get to play with color palettes combinations of flowers that I like and want to put together and see what looks really pretty if you hear a rumbling, that's the cat sitting here yeah. purring. Yeah, she's got... See? Say hi. Hi. Hi, Carrot. She's sitting here rumbling in my ear. Um, so, uh, anyway, we're growing, you know, just for ourselves. And we're integrating flowers and herbs and vegetables all together now in a smaller footprint. Something that's easier to handle doesn't take you know 12 15 hour days it's just you're shaking my camera kitty <laughs> camera shaking quite now. On the set. yeah quite on the set um, um we're on, doing it on a smaller footprint we're using um things like our tunnels going to be used for more vegetables and um, growing things that need protection from the deer because they've been really bad for the last couple of years. And so we're on a, follow, a smaller footprint and that means just smaller quantities to getting started. Second part of that is we're growing what is, how should you say it, seasonal or more just at the... Well, we're not, what we're not doing though is taking like trying to hit flower holidays right yeah you know, like, like valentine's, valentine's day, day or something <laughs> like that you know which is still winter time so yeah the the what we're going to show you today is we're just starting them today the anemones and in the past we would have had them in the ground for since october right right and so we would start harvesting our anemones usually in mid-january or yeah, so yeah I, I i i went through looking at the photographs I have in one of our first um, photographs of anemones was November 8th of a uh, several years back. It must have been in this another mild winter and but usually the 10th of January is when our anemones start to come in pretty heavy and it told that we're, that was always exciting for us because it would make sure that we had anemones available for Valentine's Day. And we're not doing that anymore. That kind of takes a little bit of effort through the winter. A lot of putting frost cloths on and off and on and off. Well, it's always been a kind of a challenge because it's not just frost cloths. It's because yeah, our, our climate here in Zone 8B is... Uh, sometimes you'll get a cold snap. Now, it's not like cold snaps you get in the Midwest or the East, but um, it would get down into the 20s at night or maybe even lower and and then pop back up in the mid-30s or to the 40s during the day. And so what that would require is a, a venting and you, because oh, we want to keep these guys cool, but not so cool that that you know they freeze out. So we'd have to make sure they're covered at night, take the coverings off in the morning, vent up the hoop houses to make certain that we get have good airflow in there because the one thing that knocks these guys out 
faster than anything is being raised in a, in a poor airflow environment with high humidity. And it's really easy to get high humidity in a tunnel in the wintertime. As soon as that sun hits it, anything that's you know condensation is going to end up dripping on the plants. And so it's always kind of like playing that game. You got to get down there early, get them opened up, and get down there early, make sure they're closed. And back so it's kind of like back and, back and forth. forth. So, <laughs> um, but normally if you're raising, like we've raised some outdoors in the spring uh, to get like an extended harvest so that these guys will come on like in probably May or early June-ish, right around in that time frame. And so they can take... Um, the spring temperatures here on the western part of Oregon because we're going to be mostly low in the 40s at night in the 50s or so during the day, uh, gradually building, you know, a little bit warmer as it goes. So they can do their vegetative growing really well and they're not so much affected by day length like a, a ranunculus is. Um, these guys are more like how long it takes from point when they're germinated to you know, get so much vegetative growth on, then they'll start blooming. And the nice thing about the anemones is that they're coming cut again. So that was my line. That's your line. Sorry, I stepped. Oh, I, oh, uh, sorry. Read read, technical. I, I, I didn't. I didn't read the prompter right. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was her line. <laughs> yeah. The, okay. So I was just going to say, as we're g continuing to grow, it's the techniques. That's yep. your, your job is still all the same, even if you're a small footprint or a large footprint. And so it doesn't matter. We're still going to be doing videos and we're still going to be growing flowers. Why we, um, when we choose, you know, what's our favorite flower, um, anemones is, you. it's almost always number one on my parade hit parade and I don't know if it's yours or not um I know it's high up there because just like what he said read my line is it's a come and cut we can have um anemones starting in January and they can go clear to late May sometimes if it's a cool spring the first part of June that's a lot of cutting of as long as you keep them deadheaded and you cut them for market and then cut all the ones you missed that um they'll just keep going and going and going they're a great flower as a like a zinnia or a dahlia you keep cutting them they keep coming until the weather gets super warm or they just i'm so tired i'm done yeah. i mean until recently they really weren't like what you call what a compound flower you know where it has multiple petals it's, it was usually a kind of daisy style, if you want to call it that. But they've done a lot of breeding on uh, new ones coming out that kind of have a, you know, different style to them, like doubles. We've, we've done doubles before. Right. Um, and it, those first iterations of them weren't really kind of, as They robust. had weak stems, yeah, mostly. Yeah, they, they were kind of weak stemmed. But um, I think the future, the, the breeding work they're doing on these guys is going to make them an even more interesting flower. A lot, a lot of growers look at anemones and then kind of maybe don't think that much of them because they're you know they're kind of a simple flower they're the first one you know to start blooming for us anyway and um they're kind of limited in terms of maybe their their palate you know there's maybe, that's not true anymore that's either. not true really anymore but mostly you know they're a shade of purple red or they're the White. pastel mix has been a real popular one where they've kind of gotten bicolored uh petals on them um, and white. Yeah, we had a couple different versions of white. And we've been raising these things, like she said, for 15 years. So yeah. they've kind of changed quite a bit as time's gone forward. But they've always been our workhorse of flowers, particularly spring flowers. No matter how many tulips we would put in, the anemones would exceed them by thousands. Yeah. So, you know, they were... Well, and, you know, and, and a lot of focus goes to ranunculus, too, which is also a beautiful It's a beautiful flower, flower but, but it's us, short. Yeah, for us. us, our season was always, like, what, three weeks, maybe? No, about a month, maybe yeah, I guess five I'm weeks. It, it, it kind of depended on the spring a bit. It, it really depends. Yeah, if we get a... And they had, we've been growing those in our unheated hoop houses, but... Um, if you get a warm day and you didn't get that vented well enough, it gets super, super hot, too hot in there. 
and it will shut those guys down. Where the anemones, they, it doesn't seem to phase them as much. They seem to take the winter better than a ranunculus, and they take um, a warmer day in the spring better than a ranunculus. It's just a workhorse. So that's why I think it's my favorite. I mean, I've had some anemones that are just outside, you know, not even being watered and stuff, and they keep coming back. So that it's just like the will to live is really... Well, we've even had some... Um sprout from seed in our front ditch yeah <laughs> which is it's Where amazing that? <laughs> we come up we, they wouldn't be long stem you know they'd be no. pretty short and the flower heads were weren't you know big super big but we've seen um they are just that you know some of the anemones that we didn't get to that might have been out in our front boxes and went to seed and, and there they, they are realize you know that we spread some seed around and there they are there they the are they, they came up so i mean they they Dang. did pretty well in our climate Right. Which I guess is, is another big positive to them. Right. So, um, the other thing we noticed when we were, you know, looking at, well, you know, what are, how, what are we going to start doing videos on and stuff like that? We looked back at ranunculus and anemone videos. We've done a lot of them. We've, I think I counted. What did I say? He's told me 22 of them. 22 of them. So I think we've. So this may be our last one. <laughs> I think we may have, you know, <laughs> said everything there is to say about it. So if you really want to, you know, just OD on this stuff, you can just go and search anemones on our playlists. And, or ranunculus. Or ranunculus. And yeah. you'll find them. <laughs> there they are. So this might be the last one for that video. But but part of the thing is that when it, we're going to be showing this year and on is how to grow all these different kinds of cut flowers for your home garden or small mini farm or whatever not yeah. for commercial sale but for friends family yourself whatever well the other thing too that i think is important to point out is is it used to be you could only get these guys through like um uh, brokers they were dealing right. with commercial uh, and now floral you can find farms them. and you can now find these same type of anemones um, I've even seen them at Home Depot you know when they're selling their fall bulbs and, and things like that and um, they think, not, may not give you the stem length that you know the commercial ones are but but it's a lot the of beauty. them are the same variety it's so. the same variety it's the beauty of in a pot or in your landscape or you know somewhere near your home and so we just wanted to we're going to share that aspect of growing cut flowers into the future the techniques and things like that are very much the same but that's the new focus of what we're doing and we're kind of excited about it. I mean, I kind of feel sad that I don't have anemones in my hand right now. I would by now. But, um, and I am kind of, what am I, I I'm missing my uh, stems right now. But I also now have time to do other things that I have not had any time to do. <laughs> and that makes me happy too. I'm still growing flowers, but I'm happy that I have time for other things so so is the horse dead now yes I mean, we, we beat, beat it to death uh, no offense to Peter. <laughs> okay so what we're growing this variety i don't know if Better this is going to be the camera i don't think they can see it oh, is no. this going to be reversed yeah <laughs> okay let me read it for you it's caramel pastel mix i believe the this is a nice variety Pastel mix comes in various shades of light blue, per, light lavender, uh, darker, it, it shaded with white. Beautiful. And you never know exactly what you're going to get in terms of the, the shading in the mix. So this is going to be fun to see what we're going to get in there. Yeah, sometimes they have red, red, red streak in them too. Yeah, <laughs> it's them, like, but... what? This is but... not pastel. This one is Mariana, Marianne Blue. 
I'm not sure if this is worth doing if it's reading backwards. This one is an all blue one, and this is a lovely shade of blue. It's not true, true hard blue. It's more, what, skyish, darker skyish blue? I don't know. Yeah. Kind of hint of purple in it or lavender. Anyway, and then Galilee Pink. This might be the hard one to find. Galilee is more trade oriented with um, flower growers. But this you can one, also find a series called Marone, that's spelled M E R O N. That's a good Those one. are also good cuts. Right. So, um, and this is a nice shade of pink. Um, as you can see, I don't have a traditional white with a black center called a panda. Um, I've grown those for years, and I got to choose what I wanted, and these are my favorites. So there's no red. The red was only used to get to Valentine's Day, and then nobody wanted it after that, <laughs> including me. Um, so I'm growing the ones that I like, and what we're going to probably do is we're going to do boxes that aren't straight growing boxes, but more flowering boxes so i'm thinking that we might be mixing these anemones with the ranunculus that we're going to grow and make it look more cottage garden i shouldn't say that he hates that word <laughs> it means damn messy um but that's kind of my envision a couple of boxes that are not straight growing kind but more now, no. when you say box, you're talking about um, really raised bed box. Yeah. And they're about four foot wide by about 12 foot long. Yeah. And the first box we've already planted was in nice straight rows that Tony yeah. planted I because planted he didn't. using industrial style. Yeah. Techniques. So he didn't get my concept. <laughs> and this is going to be a work in progress for both of us. It's a rethink on how what you grow, when you grow it, and how much. I mean, I gotta get out of my head. 1,200 plants is not enough. <laughs> it's way too much now. So I gotta get used to that idea. Um, so that's what we're, we're gonna grow in terms of anemones. And like I said, we've done videos on these, on how to do this, but Tony's gonna walk through the technical part. Yeah, um, we won't go that, that far in depth like we have in other videos on it, but the, the basics of it is is, is uh, we're using, these are like paint strainer bags. If you don't have, uh, you know, like a nylon mesh bag, these work fine. You can get them at a home center or, or paint store or whatever. You want one yeah, open? let's just start out with a Marianne Blue. That kind of, and these paint strainer bags come in various sizes. This is like a one-gallon size, and this is like a five-gallon size. And that's... Wow. Either I'm a weenie anymore, or that's... I'm going to use industrial size staples. <laughs> yeah. All right. We don't Thanks need... for your help. There we go. So are we going to do them all? Yeah, because uh, we've, we've only got a few hundred here, and we'll spread those. This is what a uh, anemone corm looks like. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Okay. This is an anemone corm. It's tiny. I <laughs> can't even see it. It's tiny. It kind of looks like what? Uh, it's kind of like a nut, almost. Or the knot nicely. A cat turd. Oh, well, I don't really collect those, so I don't <laughs> so, know. <laughs> so you need the, uh, is there a tag in there? Sometimes there's a tag. <laughs> this one. I kind of stopped doing that, so. So we need a tag, and I didn't bring any. Well, oops, oops. Here, what we'll do is we'll just cheat, and this won't look exactly great, but it won't hurt either. We're just going to rip the label off the bag. It's sticking in the water where it dissolves. Well, <laughs> it looks like it's laser printed, so. Anyway, so we're putting in these. We're going to go all three, right? Yep. Okay. So, what I do is. I'll just tie up the end, you know, in a little knot so the stuff doesn't come floating out on us. 
And uh, we've done this in the past. We, you know, you don't have to do this, but it just we found that it gives us um, a better product in the end with less rot later on. To, um, and, and the idea is, is that uh, we use an aerator, and we just have an old aquarium aerator that we've got some air stones. And there's all kinds of noise. Yeah. All these. Yeah, just put them all in. Yep. Now, different varieties also come in different sizes. This is a so, bigger one. So these are a little bit bigger. So what we'll do is we'll aerate these guys from you know, it probably ends up being about four to six hours. It kind of just depends on what we're shooting for is them. Uh, when you look at these guys and you see this wrinkled, you know, look to it. And what we're looking for is we're trying to get that to where it looks nice and smooth. And that, so what we're trying to do is hydrate these guys up, not pre-germinate them or anything like that. Um, You can add things to the water that kind of maybe, you know, if you feel that you've got a fungal problem or something like that, you could put some, you know, if you're chemically based, you could put a fungicide in there. If you're not, you can uh, just, you could probably, uh, what I've done in the past is not really worried about it because I'm only keeping them in there for like four to six hours and I've got airflow going. All right, so we've got these guys all bagged up and, uh, put them in here ready to go and so we got our three colors we got our air pump over here which I'm kind of blocking with that but uh, it you know there's a lot of people say I never use an air pump don't worry you know what honestly don't worry about it if it doesn't work for you I would not go out and buy one you know we just happen to have this and it works very well uh, particularly when we were doing large amounts of anemones but if you're doing a small amount and you're worried about you know in a four to six hour period of time maybe you having an oxygen deprivation the easiest thing to do is just be come over to your sink you know put them in your you know in a bucket and uh, arrange it so that the bucket would be slightly overflowing and that your water is on just enough to cause a drip and you know and a bubbling type thing so basically what you're doing is you're keeping a circulation of the water going and so the water will kind of drip over the edge while at the same time it's coming in and kind of creating um, it's a, a circulation don't overstuff your bucket in other words don't use a container where everything's just packed in there because then the water won't flow so that was kind of the key to uh, us is is making sure you got to the bubbles were creating a flow. That was the whole idea. And when we were doing larger amounts, um, it, it made it a lot easier to, to manage that process. Just keeping some oxygen and flow around these guys. Um, even if you did, you know, if you packed a lot of them in and you got it in the water and you don't do anything for five, six, eight hours and you come back, what you may find is, is that the areas at the bottom of the bucket have gone anaerobic and that would be uh, maybe negative to the plant itself. It might not have killed them, but it might have done a good job of setting them on a path to getting rot. So that's kind of what we're trying to avoid with all this. So since we don't use chemicals, we just want to keep things as aerobic as possible. Right. You can also put some small additives in the water. I've done that before. I've used Humix. I've used a little bit of compost extract tea. Uh, to kind of see if I, you know, I could inoculate the outside of worm casting and worm, yeah, based on using worm casting tea. And honestly, I've noticed no effective difference by just using plain water to using other things. So I'm not trying to make this complicated anymore. It's just a really simple thing. So we're going to put these guys in, you know, and just put it in our bags and they'll sink down into the water. And, uh, be around the air stones and create enough movement around with enough oxygen in the water and uh, this water is just it's it's maybe 50 60 degree water somewhere around in there 
Uh, you don't want to use, obviously, ice cold water, and you certainly don't want to use you know, water <laughs> that's over <laughs> 70 degrees. Right. Uh, the whole idea is you just want to get them enough. It's kind of like, think about what they would naturally happen if they came out of dormancy and they were growing in the ground and they received rainwater. It's going to be water, you know, in the fall that's probably 45, 50 degrees or 50 to 60 degrees in that zone somewhere in there. So that's kind of what you're shooting for. Nothing really complicated. And then just set the timer and we'll come back in four hours and they'll be good to go. Now at this point you can do one of two things. We're going to be heading into a really pretty good cold snap at night. Teens. And we, in, down That's in the a teens. little cold for us. Not usually teens. So, but yeah, and what this is going to mean is it's going to freeze the soil. And so we want to make certain these guys get started. So we're going to do a pre-sprout on them. Normally, we probably wouldn't. If we We've were just gone going both in, ways. Yeah, if, if we were just going into a prolonged period, say the next two weeks looked like we were going to be 45 in the day and, you know, maybe high 30s at night. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it because the ground won't freeze for us because you're not planting these guys super deep. That's the other thing is, is people make a mistake and they plant them too deep. These are almost a surface planting in a sense that you have, you have maybe tops a half inch over the top of the, of the corm itself. So we're going to put them in uh, regular 10, 20 trays. They're 10 inch wide by 20 long and a weave bottom. We'll put some potting mix in it and just lay these guys out so that they, and put them on a heat mat at about 60 degrees because then we want these guys to kind of move forward. Uh, the material that we put it in will be damp, but not sopping wet. In other words, you can, you shouldn't be able to sit there and squeeze it in your hand and see water coming out of it. You don't want something that wet. You just want a nice damp and something that has loft. Uh, so make sure it's got perlite in it to give it enough, you know, so that there's actual air in it. So that's kind of what we're looking for. Cool, but not too cold. Damp, but not too wet. And then and usually what happens is these guys will start showing roots probably in about seven to 10 days. You know, and at that point we'll be finished with our, uh, hopefully, <laughs> cold, cold weather, and we'll be able to plant these guys outside at that point. We we'll also have to amend the boxes that it's going into with, you know, goodies. Yeah, we got to put uh, our annual compost on and get and get the. You know, so this gives us a little more time, but right. if we were but today a little, is January twenty sixth. Um, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we would anticipate these guys to, you know, probably sprout it once they're outside and start putting out leaves probably a couple of weeks after we plant them, uh, depending on how the weather goes. So we're looking at something that'll be like mid-February. We'll right. have nice green little tops. And that, and that for us, usually by the middle of February, our worst instances of freezing weather for prolonged periods of time is pretty much over. You can get an occasional, you know, we've had frost or snow on first day of spring but it was kind of the next day it was beautiful after that yeah so you get these weird abnormal weather events but if you can get to valentine's day probably the worst is over yeah the key to it is we don't want the ground to freeze a frost on top of the ground is one thing but that's not really going to hurt these guys these guys can actually take temperatures down to about almost 22 23 degrees but if that ground freezes you know, and stays frozen, then they get damaged and then they get rot. So the key to it is making certain that you don't plant these things, these guys outside uh, in such a way, unless you can protect them for, you know, some way from that ground from freezing, because that'll be the thing that'll, that'll do them in. But other than that, you know, as long as you keep a low fertilization, that's the other thing. We don't want to fertilize these guys too much. We'll use maybe a little JLF when they first get started. And then we're just stop at that point because um, these guys are really susceptible to aphids if you over fertilize with too much nitrogen the plants will look great but, the, but they'll send up very weak stemmed blooms and the and, flower will just be covered with aphids and it becomes an aphid magnet yeah, yeah. high nitrogen content in the plant is an, an attractant for aphids and that that holds true for basically any plant it's um, also for ranunculus yeah. the same thing if it 
too much nitrogen and it gets so gloriously green and really tall foliage but the aphids just attack the flowers with a vengeance yep other than that this should be the biggest nemesis we're going to face is probably slugs yeah and so we'll, <laughs> they're we'll bad have to keep an eye out for those guys too right so that's when we're you know if you want more detail on um growing anemones just check out all our yeah. other videos because we, we go in a playlist on them yeah we we've gone through the details of planting them in crates and everywhere yep. you know and so check that out if you want more details this is more just like what's the job we needed to do today and we wanted to explain because we've had a lot of inquiries with are you guys not growing any more flowers? And it's like, oh, of course I'll have flowers. That's, you know, I've been doing this for... And this will be the last video we say where we're tired. So if you find yeah. us saying it again, well... <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> There'll be a like, prize. No, there won't be a no, prize. No, there's no prizes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. This is where we are in our in our life journey, and we're excited about being able to do all kinds of different things and share them with you here on our video and our YouTube channel. So, with any more to say? How about bye-bye? Bye-bye.